I'm Andrew Conway and welcome to IPA Update. I wanted to take this opportunity to provide you an update on activities since the amalgamation of the Institute of Financial Accountants and the Institute of Public Accountants in December 2014. The combined professional body, the IPA Group, now represents a collective base of more than 35,000 members and students, the largest SME SMP focused accountancy body in the world. There's been significant activity to bring together as a working party the staff in the UK who are busy working on the integration during their current membership renewal period and planning for the move to new offices in London. Whilst in Australia, the team's been actively looking at systems and important back office support processes. Of interest to you will be that members can shortly expect to enjoy a range of new benefits, the details of which are currently being discussed with global partners, but they include accounting software developers and providers, financial institutions and HR support partners. We're also completing arrangements uh, for the delivery of online professional development programs accessible to all members as well as a single web portal for all members to enjoy. In addition to the joint LinkedIn group which we hope members in both the northern and southern hemispheres will actively support. I'm also very pleased to confirm that we'll shortly be issuing, as promised, IPA and IFA membership certificates to those IPA members who renew their memberships. Uh, so as soon as you renew your membership for 2015-16 financial year, you can enjoy dual designations. For example, if you hold FIPA, you'll automatically be granted the right to add FFA designations to your post nominals. More details about these certificates will be included in your member renewal notice, so make sure you keep an eye out for it if you're interested in this particular offer. Last month, we outlined the IPA's views on the government's recently re released tax discussion white paper, which aims to encourage contributions ahead of the formal white paper that will set out the government's priorities on tax. The IPA is currently working on its submission to Treasury in relation to the government's tax white paper, and we would appreciate and welcome input from you, our members. We've formulated a quick poll survey to assess what your level of support would be for a range of reform options. The poll will only take a couple of minutes to complete and can be accessed by going to the link on your screen now or by clicking on the link in the comments section below. We appreciate your time in completing the survey and look forward to your input into our submission, which is due to be lodged on the 1st of June this year. It's a sad reality that many individuals' planned superannuation nest eggs for retirement may be inadequate to sustain their lifestyle in their retirement years. There's ex extensive legislation that now regulates how much and the manner in which Australians contribute to superannuation, but limited rules on, uh, that relate to how they can withdraw those superannuation balances. Many retirees take either a partial or total lump sum to pay off a mortgage or purchase other non-income supporting assets, whilst others invest in a pension product such as an annuity or life pension or an income earning product such as a bank account. While the IPA supports choice in superannuation, the current use of retirement funds is not always appropriate and does little to diminish the future pension burden faced by a shrinking workforce and ageing population. We therefore believe that there should be suitable incentives which encourage retirees to invest in income streams such as pension and annuity products. Annuities may be the missing link in people's thinking between drawing down from their existing superannuation and finding sustainable income streams that support their retirement. This is backed up by the Financial Systems Inquiry, the FSI, Findings which of course recommended that annuities be offered as a default option for how to access superannuation after retirement, meaning that people need to opt out in order to receive a lump sum payment. The FSI report stated that greater use of annuities may help retirees' super savings go even further and reduce the need for them to draw on the age pension and the IPA believes that annuities support the policy intentions of the superannuation system and will generally better provide for the longer term needs of retirees and protect against costs of living risks. And in May, the ACCC, in partnership with the Institute of Public Accountants, are holding a small business and cyber crime forum. This free event, titled Know the Risks and Protect Yourself, will be held on Tuesday the 19th of May from 5.30 till 8pm at the State Library of Victoria. Come along and hear from a number of experts on topics 
such as management practices and characteristics that leave your business vulnerable to scams, how you protect your business from cyber threats in just 10 minutes a day, a small business cybercrime and identity theft overview, including real-life case studies and helpful hints. The presentations will be followed by a Q&A panel discussion. For more information or to register for this event, please visit the address on your screen. For those unable to attend, we'll make sure we capture the key messages and circulate them to our members through our digital hub and various channels. For some time now, the IPA has provided members with very competitive professional indemnity and tax audit insurance options through our in-house insurance provider, IPA Insure. Did you know though that the IPA Insure now also offers general insurance which provides access to appropriate cover for all major business risks such as property damage, theft, business interruption and cyber crime just to name a few. IPA Insure can help you select and secure the most appropriate business insurances at a very competitive rate. If your business operates in a niche industry with specialist needs we can help you source cover that suits your business. To talk with a general insurance specialist or if you need assistance in choosing the right cover for you, simply call IPA Insure on 03 8665 3139 or visit the member section of the IPA website. And that's all for this episode. In closing, don't forget that if you're intending uh, on coming to this year's IPA National Congress in November, brought to you by Reckon, that early bird rates in Friday the 15th of May, so get in early to save up to $350 off regular package rates. The program for this event will be uh, out mid-year, but we highly recommend booking your on-site accommodation by mid-May, as we're confident that this will sell out very early. In the meantime, we are happy to announce that the dynamic uh, MC duo of Andrew Colrain and Petrus Lapis will be back for 2015. We can't wait to see what mischief they get up to this year. Remember to subscribe to the IPA YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button on your screen now and to stay in touch with the IPA through our website publicaccountants.org.au, our digital hub pubact.org.au, Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter at IPA Accountants. I'm Andrew Conway, see you next month.